Would you recommend this now? Uh, thinking about picking it up on sale. I mean, I'd say so. Uh, what's the easiest thing I can compare this to? Honestly, not too far off of, like, Subnautica. Let's see. So it's over here. It's it's like Subnautica if it was a much bigger, slightly emptier world. And no... Well, the plot was less quite Im impactful. But, like, if you're looking for an excuse to pick this game up, I think it's earned it. Uh, if you're still super on the wall and, like, I don't know, got other things to play, you could also just keep waiting. They're going to keep updating this for the next couple of years, so... Why rush? But if you're just wondering, it's like, hey, is it actually super decent now? I would say yeah. Let's see, so where am I at? 63, so we're looking for 63.37. Why is it moving? Is it this? It said the coordinates are unstable. That's good. There's an unknown building over there. That's probably too far away, though. Maybe it is that building. I'm just gonna head for it. We'll see how it goes. Because it definitely seems like the coordinates are losing their shit a little bit. Still in the same general area. Yeah, that's it. Nope, there we go. I'm just gonna grab a bunch of dihydrogen for a second. Kill the heck out of you. Grab some amp. Oh, no, right. You have to shoot this. Peace out, suckers. Full man away. But, okay. He's doing this again, ain't it? Right, there we go. Let's see. Little question. Would you prefer a game to release basically 100% complete creators give no after launch support? Or barely finished creators keep working on it for many, many years after release. I prefer complete games. The problem with perpetual early access games is they ruin themselves before I'm able to finish them. And that is miserable for me. This is not working out great. Think of it this way. If every game you played was unfinished... You'd start to get a little sick of it. And so... False. How do I... There we go. I'm just down here. So, from my perspective... I like No Man's Sky. But every single time I come back to play No Man's Sky...
a little, I lose a little bit of interest. You know, you can even kind of track this. That the first time this game came out, I played it for, gosh, I don't know how many episodes. It was a lot. It was like 50 something. And then 30, 40 something, 20, 30 something. And then the last series that I did, last couple of series were like 5 to 15, give or take. Okay, Archive of Corvax Prime. Retrieval in process. Log follows. Partial success achieved. The bridge allows the implantation of consciousness shards with discrete sh within discrete shells. Unit remains connected to a greater mind. Sensory inputs fully shared. Attempts to localize sensory inputs cause dramatic deseparation. Unfruitful. Sus suspect biological core required. Root sensory experience and bodily experience to improve stability. System must have local control. Experimental Synthesis Unit. Operational. Awaiting Biogenesis Materials. Plaque replays more data from before the destruction of Corvax Prime. These researchers were building something. A biological shell? An individual manifestation of their convergent minds. Well, I need a pulsating core, but I don't have that. These machines were built to synthesize life from advanced technology and once again supplied with the plans required, pushed along this path by those who tried before. One of the plans is for a novel multi-tool upgrade, the solar ray. Okay, pulsating core requires liquid sun and gold. I swear I have a supply of gold somewhere. Oh yeah, there it is. Now, I thought there was freighter tech that I have to be on my freighter for. Ugh. Because I gotta warp this from here. Alright. Oh shoot, we need my ship sooner than later. Otherwise I'm gonna start taking too much damage. Okay. So we have the gold, no idea how to get the liquid sun. I guess... Let's see, let's see what this tech is. Solar, solar ray. Transforming terrain deposits into liquid sun. Alright, there we go. So this is how we get the liquid sun. That's actually pretty easy. Oh, hey. This might actually be considered... Nope, they don't, they don't synchronize. It's fine. Sodium deposit, sodium deposit. I'm just trying to find the closest one. I don't have to go too far away. It actually is this sodium deposit. Or pirate deposit. Alright, there we go. I might want to wait for the storm to pass, though, because otherwise I'm going to get wrecked. Okay. Uh, let's see. But, so, the more I play this game, the less I'm interested in playing more of it. Not because it's bad. It's actually better every single time. The problem is because a little bit bit of that childlike wonder is lost, if that makes any sense. Uh, and so, I thoroughly enjoy this, and I do recommend it for everybody that asks, but like, I have put a hundred hours in, Prob probably, give or take. And so, there is a very real possibility that by the time No Man's Sky finally is done done, I will have already played and seen everything, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I know that I would get a fuller experience if I just waited. But I don't want to wait, and to some lesser degree, uh, it's not in my job description. This is the game that I was doing the queue and then the space bar to go forward in, as opposed to that other game that I was playing recently where I just chucked my... chucked something away. Like an absolute baboon. Man, I really can get some distance here. Okay, let's just get a bunch of liquid sun. I might honestly just stick it up. Uh, I might honestly just stick it in my 
freighter. Because I doubt I'm ever going to use Liquid Sun for too much. It's half off on Steam currently. That's a great price, honestly. Okay. Uh, but just to finish the thought that I was kind of going with. I want to enjoy games at their fullest. And I find if a game is in early access, I can't. There is always going to be some weird design de decisions and rough edges that makes it hard to fight. I mean, easy easiest example I can think of uh, for this point is... I don't know how many of you saw my Dead Cells series, but I played Dead Cells about two to three weeks before launch. And so by the time it actually properly came out, it already was a different game. They, they changed a bunch of things around and, and made it better. Uh, but my initial impressions had been tainted, honestly, by the pre-release version, which I thought was actually quite bad. It had a lot of good things about it. You know, the movement was there, the combat was there, the enemies were kind of frustrating and the loot wasn't very interesting, and there was, you know, there was just a lot of stuff. And so I found myself just kind of bored by the time it finally became good, and now I can barely play Dead Cells without just being like, yeah, but I've seen this and done this before, and I just don't enjoy it. And so that's that's why I'm always an advocate of games that are done or have really, really short early access periods. Uh, it's a good example. Uh, Scourgebringer is a roguelike that is coming out 1.0 in the next couple weeks, I think. And I will admit there's definitely some things about Scourgebringer that I wish they had spent more time on. But... It was, what, maybe a six to nine month early access period? I've lost all sense of time for this year. Uh, but, you know, I can say very safely that I got to play the beginning when it first hit early access, enjoyed it, and then stopped. You know, kind of at a safe point and said, I will come back to this later. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. With games like No Man's Sky, where it's been in development for literal years and will continue to be in development for literal years, it's not that I dislike the early access, it's just that the enthusiasm slowly fades with time. And there are always exceptions. Like, I will probably always play a shit ton of Forager whenever I get the chance. And, you know, Minecraft is technically eternal. But most games can't sustain that. And what are what are some eternal games that I'm fine with coming back to? Rimworld. Factorio. Minecraft, I'm not a big Minecraft guy, but I I will probably gladly play Minecraft if somebody asks. Uh from like, you know, one of my creator groups that I'm attached to. It's like, hey, you wanna do a Minecraft series? And, I'd actually probably say yes, as long as I had some kind of direction. Halo. Eh, I mean, but it's not like Halo's early access. They just keep coming out with new games. But even then, Halo 4 and 5 are considered the worst of the series, so I don't know about that one. I would like to play the new Halo games, or new Halo, the, the rest of the MCC collection. Let's see, you gotta get back to Minecraft Eternal, you'll love it. Is that the one that we've got on the community service or server? I probably should, but I've got some other projects that I wanna I want to get put together before I even attempt Minecraft again. Cause the last time I did Minecraft it took a while. Yeah, what about Terraria? Terraria is another good good one. Where I part of the thing that made Terraria good, uh, there are two things that made Terraria's uh eternal develop eternal development work. One, very long periods of time between uh, updates, effectively. And so all of the stuff that got added truly felt like, hey, this is a really good good excuse for me to come back. And the other thing is the base game felt complete. I love No Man's Sky. It doesn't really feel complete still and probably won't feel complete for quite some time. Draria felt complete when the Wall of Flesh was a boss. Also helped that it was, you know, 10 bucks. But I think I bought it for 250. Like, Terraria is, was goofy cheap, but I'm pr pretty sure they still sell it 
relatively cheaply, often. What about Binding of Isaac? Mixed on Bis Binding of Isaac. I I had mixed feelings on... Uh, shoot. What was the... What was the Binding of Isaac? It wasn't Repentance. That's the one that's coming out. What's the... What was the first one that came out? Before Afterbirth. Shoot, I don't remember. Anyway. Rebirth. There we go. I, th there's just too many getting thrown around because there's Afterbirth, Anti-Birth, Rebirth, Repentance, and like probably one or two others. And it's just a little easy for me to lose track of. Anyway. Uh, I liked Rebirth. I didn't care much for Afterbirth. It wasn't terrible, but it was just... It was more. But it wasn't more of what I was interested in, so, like, Rebirth almost felt better. Because uh, re Rebirth actually felt like I'm discovering this game again for the first time and it feels really good. Afterbirth felt like more Rebirth, but it bloated. And not in a good way. You know, all the new bosses... They had a couple of, like, standard interesting bosses... But the actual, like, end bosses and, like, the secret things, like, it wasn't worth it for me. It wasn't very fun. That was really high-end Isaac stuff, and all of the Isaac players that I know just honestly skip out on that content anyway. And so I'm looking forward to Repentance, but I'm not really sure if I'm going to get the full experience out. Oh, let's, uh, storage. Here we go. Oh, this is freighter storage. I want to go to exosuit cargo. There we go. I'm just going to start taking a bunch of these high-end resources that I have a lot of. And move them over so it's just kind of unified. Because I got a lot of storage slots, and I might as well just keep them all here. Oh, let's see. Hey, thank you, JDN Radiator, for the four-month resub. Yo, thank you. Also, I totally missed it, but thank you, William Ray Reed. William Red for the four gifted subs. I'm so sorry I missed that. Also, thank you, Mark the Mark, for the sub. <laughs> and Rito for the sub to Jonas Fatson. I probably missed that. What are the differences between cargo slots and suit and regular slots? Larger capacity? Sort of. They made it so max stacks are now 999 no matter where it is in your inventory. Uh, mostly I just use cargo slots for uh, convenience. I like to be organized. And so anything that is high vo volume I will put there. Uh, even though what I really should do is put stuff like, uh, what's a good example? Well. Viking daggers. They stack up to five in your regular inventory slots, and they stack up to ten in your cargo. So technically, that's where you're supposed to put it, but... I just... I prefer this. This way, my inventory is filled with this stuff that I'm actually working with. Might have too much chromatic metal. I'll have to get rid of it. Eventually. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I definitely can organize this a bit better. Not that it matters too much. I just like being kind of tidy here. Uh, let's see. Right, I can just quick transfer a lot of this stuff. Because, yeah, if I've got it in my inventory, I don't know about that one. Then I don't have to worry about it cluttering anywhere else. What about in here? Okay. 
Anything else sitting around? A lot of plat. Oh, a lot of platinum. All right, so let's go back to this one a little bit. How's the living ship thing coming along? Very slowly. There we go. That's better. Now the rest of my inventory is relatively clean. There's still some things that I'll probably want to stack up, but chances are I'm going to want to get a lot more stuff. Well, more cargo capacity. Oh, ionized cobalt. Right, that's a thing. Here, we have some extra bonus stacks. Let's just get rid of that. Uh, do I not have copper? I guess I don't. Ooh. Okay. I don't really have a plan for organizing this at all. Can I... Can we not get a bunch of people just telling me to play different games today? <laughs> I, I get it. People want me to play a bunch of other stuff, maybe. Uh, but I've looked over at chat like three or four times today. Ooh, I forgot. I can increase the freighter size. Uh, I have I see somebody saying, play more Drake Hollow, play Grotopia. I get it. I appreciate the suggestions. I just, I'm, it's becoming too common for me. Mainly, all of these things, if you're ever if you ever watching me and you want to ask me to play a game, or if you want to ask, like, what happened to a series, or if you're going to play more of a game, uh, the place to ask is always Discord, because that way I, I can answer there instead. It's really awkward for me. Uh, it's me especially? Question mark? Ow. Uh, night. Well, alright. It's really awkward for me specifically to... Uh, answer these questions because all of this goes up on YouTube later and it's incredibly rough spending X amount of time explaining to people like hey no I'm busy uh, and then you know explaining why and then it's just like yeah but alternatively just ask on Twitter Discord? Discord's still best. Because the thing is, on, on Discord, somebody else can answer you. So I, d I don't have to always be the one doing it. I also, caveat, I'm really tired today. I woke up at 5.30, so it's just like, my patience for too much shenanigans is very low. Which is why I'm playing No Man's Sky as opposed to anything else. As the machine begins to begins its work, I feel the egg twitch within my exosuit. It's responsible for activating these machines. Its imprint upon is upon the life I am creating. Fragile heart. Am I just collecting organs for this thing? Do I have the... Yep, I got the mature neural s stem, and we've got the fragile heart. Which, yeah, I just gotta hold on to for 24 hour, 20 hours. So not quite the same, but still. Okay. But yeah, there, there's a bunch of games that I, I want to play, and I wish I had time for, and energy for, but it... Can I, can I launch? There we go. Alright. Well, this planet is pretty much donezo. And we've got a 20-hour period before the Void Egg will, will go. What do we do next? Not able to talk on Discord. If you're on Discord but you can't talk, then you need to read the rules. Because the rules will tell you exactly how to talk. Most Discords are like that. Okay, so yeah, let's, let's try the community event. So, for frame of reference for those of you that don't know, uh, no Man's Sky has a weekly community event where every player is kind of directed towards the same location. I've only done it once, but apparently it has, like, interesting stories. So, is it this one? I guess it must be. 
I don't I, It might not always be. A disturbance has been detected in the Sentinel Hive Mine. A terminal in a mining facility exhibits anomalous tendencies and may reveal the location of a Sentinel... It, location of Sentinel material deposits if probed. Maybe not this one. Maybe one of the other ones? I don't know. Let's dive into this. I don't want anybody else to play with me. Okay, they no longer have that going on. Stopped last week. That's fine. I really should pay more attention to the weekly stories. I... Alright. Give data planets. Okay, so we get some nanites. Be kind of neat if you could actually do backlogged ones. Anyway, derelict freighters. Oh shit, I have a time limit here. There's No Man's Sky crossplay. Yes! So the weekend missions show up and get purple and give 1200 quicksilver. Gotcha. They're focusing on patching it now. They paused it. Uh, before the release. Got it. That actually makes a lot of sense. Would still be cool if you could actually, like, go back to the old ones. Maybe not get the qu Quicksilver or something. I I don't like timed activities in a lot of cases, and admittedly this is entirely, like, a personal-ish grump. But anytime a game has, like, truly time-locked events, I wish they would have them in some way that you could go back and replay them later. Uh, I used to play a lot of Guild Wars 2, and they started their living story off with, like, this big kind of world-shattering event kind of thing. Which is cool, but then when it was done, it was done and nobody could go back to it. And so I personally did complete the living story fully, But, I don't remember it that well. At this point, it's been long enough that just wiped from my memory. I, I'm sure I could look up a, a video. I know I know somebody did, like, a recreation of it or something. Uh, or, like, a really good lore episode where they, you know, broke down what happened. I honestly don't remember, and I haven't looked. But, for me, it's kind of losing that potential experience permanently is kind of a tragedy in the same way that like it's such a shame to see like an old MMO beloved by many but maybe no longer profitable because of its age quality bugs who knows what and to see them fade and then eventually get deleted is just kind of one of the sadder things about the gaming industry uh I guess not exactly in the same vein, but I was reading about how uh, they're actually shutting down Farmville, and I don't give a rat's ass about Farmville. I don't think I don't think Farmville is a very good game. I knew people that played it. I knew people that played it aggressively. Uh, let's see. I don't actually wait. I think I have upgraded this thing. And, you know, at this point, they probably have not played in years. But to just lose out on that experience potentially forever, purely for the convenience of the developers and nothing more. Like, I can understand if there's something, like, truly reprehensible about a game, like deleting it from the internet. Uh, or, you know, just something... I'm not going to say evil about the game, but, like, you know... The, was it E.T. for the Atari? Like, okay, I'm fine with that game kind of just becoming nothing more than a historical piece and not being playable because, gosh. 
But even then, it's important to have it. Okay. Terminal's covered in thick purple substance. Shimmering bubbles expanding just below the surface. The arm, the alarm rings in my ears. Touch the display. Gingerly, I touch the terminal, but it doesn't respond. Perhaps if the network mistook me for a sentinel, I could get further. Slather with Pugnium. Terminal comes to life. Coordinates flash rapidly across the display in a strange purple script. I download the address to my exosuit. Navigation systems. Okay. Hop in this and get out of here. Miss Fusion Fall. If anyone knows what that is. I tried playing Fusion Fall for a little while. It seemed really neat, but I... I don't think I had a good enough computer or good enough ISP at the time, and I couldn't play it very well. Thankfully, this will never happen to EverQuest. Maybe, probably, but it's like, I feel after a certain point, games, MMOs that are quote-unquote dead, games that are not being supported anymore, I don't know, I, I don't know if I want to say they should go open source. Oh boy. We gotta get me a grenade. Okay, this is now a cover shooter. Ow. There we go. So now is about where I want to get some combat upgrades. Let's wait until my shields come back. Go from there. Ow. What? Use your ship to destroy the walkers. It doesn't really, really work that well. Shoot. I think we've quite literally got... Okay, there, there's my shields coming back. We've got something that is capable of shooting me at this distance. Like, through the world. That's so you can change your backpack type now? There's only... There's only, like, one alternative. Okay. Okay. I don't think I'm going to be able to kill I'm not going to be able to kill the big bads. Oop. But I can at least kill a couple of them. We're going to wait. Okay, here we go. I don't think they're going to chill until they're Dead? We're gonna have to wait. High chance I'll probably just die here. Uh so you can fly off. Don't they usually don't they send ships after you? Or was that the old game? Cause from what I remember back in the day. From what I remember back in the day is if you lift it off while you were wanted, people would just be unreasonably mad at you forever. They send ships if you're in space. So if I'm just flying around, maybe it's safer. That's the trick. Okay, got it. Because I remember making the mistake of flying off into space while with the wanted... Uh... With a wanted level once, and I was just absolutely mobbed to the point where there was no survival. 